Sarah, in reference to the President's tweets this morning that have been a matter of some discussion today, you said earlier on Fox News that the President has a right to defend himself when he is attacked, and it's no secret that this particular program has been very critical of him. However, the nature of the tweets this morning has drawn condemnation from people on Capitol Hill, including the Speaker of the House, Senator Graham, Senator Susan Collins, all of whom are allies of the President. Did, did the President go too far with this tweet in its deeply personal nature? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I think that the President has been uh, attacked mercilessly on personal accounts by members on that program. And I think he's been very clear that when he gets attacked, uh, he's going to hit back. I think the American people elected somebody who's tough, who's smart, and who's a fighter. And that's Donald Trump. And I don't think that it's a surprise to anybody that he fights fire with fire. Uh, the things that this show has called him, and not just him, but a numerous members of his staff, including myself and many others, uh, are very deeply personal. So to then turn and pretend like, uh, you know, this approach is, uh, I, I guess it's kind of like we're living in the twilight zone. They do this day after day after day, and then uh, the president responds and defends himself, and everybody is appalled and blown away. I, frankly, um, if this had happened in the previous administration, the type of attacks launched on this program, uh, the things they say, utterly stupid, personality disorder, mentally ill, constant personal attacks, calling multiple members liars, liars to their faces while they're sitting on their programs, the rest of the media would have said, guys, no way, hold on. But nobody does that. But the president, he's not going to step back. He showed that, and that's exactly what he did today. If I, if I could just follow on that, Sarah, if I could just follow on that. A, a, a couple of the criticisms from supporters of the president have been that this particular tweet was beneath the dignity of the office. Where does the president draw that line on the dignity of the office? Look, I, I, I think that um, he shows that every day in the decisions that he's making, the focus and the priorities he's laid out in his agenda, uh, but he's not going to sit back and be attacked by the liberal media, Hollywood elites, and when they hit him, he's going to hit back. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. Sarah. I have a health care question, but on this, just one other aspect of it. Some have suggested in their tweet response or public announcement today that the president misconstrued one of the messages that should have been gathered from shooting that involves Steve Scalise and others, that the hostility of the verbal environment can create an atmosphere of violence. I'm not saying that, but members of Congress have said that about this particular tweet. I know that episode affected the President and those here at the White House personally very importantly and, and deeply. Do you have any reaction to that sentiment that conversations like this create an atmosphere that is either dangerous or one we need to avoid? The president in no way, uh, form or fashion has ever uh, promoted or encouraged violence, if anything, quite the contrary. And he was simply uh, pushing back and defending himself. So the, Sarah, I, I should have Republicans who are criticizing the president. I want to, I want to go back to the uh, shooting and remember what President Trump said then. He said, our country will perhaps become closer, more unified, so important. Does his tweet this morning, his series of tweets, help to unify the country? Uh, again, Kristen, I think I've asked, and this question has been asked, and I've answered it several did, times. Do his tweets help to unify the country to do what he said he wanted to see happen in the wake of that shooting? Look, again, I, I think that the president is pushing back uh, against people who <laughs> attack him day after day after day. Where is the outrage on that? You guys are constantly coming and asking, like, is this okay? He does it one time. This is day after day after day. And it's not just the president. The only person that I see a war on is this president and everybody that works for him. I have two questions to follow up on that. One is that I understand your point, but he is the president of the United States. They are cable news anchors. So he has to stand to a higher standard, one. And two, you talk about criticism. He said that former President Obama wasn't born in this country, right? So he clearly was a part of criticizing the past president, who was not immune to criticism himself. So I wonder how you make that argument. Uh, again, I am I think I've been pretty clear that when the president gets hit, he's going to hit back harder, which is what he did here today. But doesn't he have to meet a higher standard than cable news anchors? Sir, doesn't he have to meet a higher standard than cable news anchors? Uh, look, I, I don't think you can expect someone to be personally attacked 
day after day, minute by minute, and sit back. Look, the American people elected a fighter. They didn't elect somebody to sit back and do nothing. That's that they knew what they were getting when they voted for Donald Trump, and he won overwhelmingly. Sarah, how is insulting a woman you've on Twitter being what, a fighter? What about the impact of, of statements like this on his effectiveness? There was a, a Marist poll this week that, that said 68 percent of registered voters said the president's tweets are reckless and distracting. Only 22 percent say that they're effective and informative. And Republicans on this question are split down the middle. Half of Republicans say that they're they're reckless and distracting. So how, how, how can you argue that, that this is something the president must do? I, I answered this question yesterday in regards to the poll. Uh, I think any time the president has a chance to speak directly to the American people, it's a good thing. Sarah, so, how do you, how do you feel about the president attacking another woman, specifically for her looks, and what does that show as an example to how men should be treating other women? I, uh, look, everybody wants to make this a, a an attack on a woman and equality. What about the constant attacks that he receives or the rest of us? I'm a woman and I've been attacked by this show multiple times, but I don't cry foul because of it. Uh, I think that you know you want to create this false narrative. And, uh, one hand, it's like let's treat everybody equally, and on the other hand, they attack, 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 and he responds, and apparently that's wrong. I'm sorry, guys. I've, I've answered this question. Oh. Can I ask you a separate question too? And this kind of gets to the point that's been made. And exactly, this is the point that's been made. So I'm not sure why we're continuing to answer the same question. The president is a fighter. I just want to put it in because you talk about being personally affected by all of this as well. And that nothing is wrong with the president fighting fire with fire is the argument that you're making. So I, I would ask this to you sort of on a personal level. You have stood here and talked about your family from this podium. Are you going to tell your kids this behavior is okay? Look, I've been asked before uh, when it comes to role models as a person of faith. Um, I think we all have one perfect role model. And when I'm asked that question, I point to God, I point to my faith, and that's where I would tell my kids to look. Um, none of us are perfect, and certainly there's only one that is, and that's where I would that point that direction. I want to ask you my